Hello everyone, welcome to my new channel, Flight Level View. Before I get started with this video, I would just like to tell all my viewers that I'll be purchasing a GoPro camera in the following weeks, and I'll be uploading aviation videos from that point on. But today is going to be another aviation education video targeted towards new airline pilots. I'm pretty sure most commercial pilots and CFIs, MEIs have heard of this concept bounce field. This concept is for jets and is related to V1 speed. In your initial multi-engine training, you've heard of these concepts, accelerate stop and accelerate go. You add full power, you accelerate to your rotation speed, something goes wrong, you chop the power, you elect to stop, and that distance that you get from start to stop is your accelerate stop distance. Accelerate go is slightly different. From a stop, you add full takeoff power, you approach your rotation speed, something goes wrong, you elect to keep going, you rotate, and the horizontal distance that you cover by the time you reach your screen height is your accelerate go distance. That concept for accelerate stop and accelerate go are virtually the same for jets. When flying jets, there is a V-speed called V1. V1 is decision speed. That V1 speed is the indicator to the pilot whether he should stop or if he's past that number, he has to continue even though he's lost an engine. This graph that I drew in front of you is the most important takeaway of this video. The x-axis is aircraft velocity and the y-axis is runway distance required. I've drawn two colored lines, one red, one blue. The red line represents accelerate stop, the blue line represents accelerate go. I'm just going to focus on the red line for now. Observe how as the velocity increases, the runway distance required also begins to increase on the y-axis. Let's imagine that you're the pilot in command, you've lined up for the runway, and you're clear for takeoff. As you advance power and your ground speeds at around 10 to 15 knots, your right engine explodes, you get startled, you chop the power, you slam on the brakes. How much distance do you think you've consumed from initial application of power to complete stop? I think it's safe for me to say that it would have been a lot less distance compared to doing that same thing at 100 knots. You can see the letters that I've drawn on the red line, A2, B2, C2, D1, and E1. Notice as the aircraft velocity increases, the distance required to get it to a complete stop keeps increasing. Now I'm going to start talking about the blue line. It's the inverse of the red line. As the aircraft velocity begins to increase, the runway distance required begins to decrease. Imagine you're the captain lined up on the runway, you're clear for takeoff, and as you advance takeoff power around 10 to 15 knots, your right engine explodes. You have to keep going. How much runway do you think you're going to consume? I think it's safe to say that it's going to consume a lot more runway than doing the same thing at 150 knots. So at lower speeds, it's a lot harder to continue a takeoff and keep going with a single engine, but it's a lot easier to stop the aircraft, and at higher speeds, it's much easier to take off on a single engine and keep continuing the climb versus trying to stop the airplane at such a high speed. So somewhere in between those points, you're going to have a balanced field length, where the distance required to stop the aircraft and the distance required to continue the takeoff are the same. The letters that I've drawn on the red and blue line, A, B, C, D, E, 1 and 2, they represent multiple V1 options. I'm going to use C1 and C2 for this example. You'll notice at the same aircraft velocity, you'll have two different green lines representing runway length required. At that slow speed, it's really easy to stop the airplane, but at the same time and at the same speed, C1, where it connects the blue line, it's extremely difficult to take off. Now I'm going to use the opposite example where the aircraft is moving quite fast at D1 and D2. If you look at D2, at that speed, if you were to lose an engine, the aircraft can continue to climb quite easily. But at D1, you'll notice the green required line requires more runway because the faster you go, the harder it is to stop. This last graph should help clarify the significance of balance V1. Remember in the previous slide I was using C1, C2, D1, D2 as examples? If you pick the more conservative of the two and erase what's below it, 
this is what the graph ends up looking like. Balance V1 requires the least amount of runway required, meaning that you won't be payload weight restricted when taking off a short runway. Thank you for watching my video. If you like my video, give it a thumbs up or subscribe, and stay tuned, I'll be having more aviation videos up here shortly. Thank you.